Hi everybody, Red Hill Eagle here. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode three of Best for Business. It's our WWE 2016 save and it's Monday, week two of July. It's Monday Night Raw. We kick off with a pre-show match, a women's match. As I said previously, I won't keep saying it every week, but a women's division is kind of resigned to the pre-show at the moment until I can kind of get my head around it a little bit more and sort of see where what I'm going to do with it. I'm actually thinking about increasing the time for Raw. I, I think it was three hours and I cut it to two because that's what I'm used to. But I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, do you know what? There's so many guys I want to feature. Maybe two just isn't quite enough. So, yeah, I might increase it. Um, I might not increase it to three, but maybe two and a half. And if, if I do that, I probably will sort of put the women back on the uh, on the main show. But we'll see. We'll see what happens there. This is uh, Becky Lynch taking on Naomi, taking on Sasha Banks in a triple threat match. Terrible wrestling, non-existent crowd heat. Becky Lynch defeated Naomi and Sasha Banks in 13 minutes 54 when Becky Lynch pinned Naomi with a pump handle slam, rating of 48 overall. Into the main show then, we've got uh, John Cena opening with uh, a promo. He's kind of, um, it's, a, it's a USA promo. And what I mean by that is, you know, he's, trying to get everyone pumped up, you know, the United States, the best country in the world, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, people like Rusev want to come in and take our United States championship and, and change the name of it. And, you know, what's that all about? And of course, Rusev interrupts and slags Cena off. And, you know, the USA isn't as good as you will say, you know, you've got this, you've got that, you don't have this, you don't have that, you know, all kinds of different things. And, uh, just being being the uh, the usual kind of the heel, and then John Cena says, "Look, there's one guy there. There's one guy in this roster, out there in that locker room, who stood up to you, and he deserves an opportunity. I think he should have a shot at your belt." And Rusev is kind of I'm and thinking, "Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that." You know, John Cena says, "Well, I'll tell you what. How about this? If I can beat you tonight, you've got to give Apollo Cruz." A title match and Rusev is actually a bit sort of uh overconfident maybe the right the right word I, I don't know but you know yeah I can beat you and he's probably thinking you know he's got got Lana there to uh to help him out so basically this is just to book our main event and <laughs> we're gonna have John Cena take on Rusev in a non-title match this segment got a 66 maybe a bit disappointing but the storyline did actually gain heat Breezango take on the Usos, just a throwaway match, tag team, get a couple of tag teams on there. Quite similar to the WCW save, actually. We don't have, we've got loads of tag teams. We don't have many that are that high up the card. Certainly not ones that I I would want to push. I mean, we've got things like, um, I can't remember who his partner is now, but like uh, Gold Dust. But, you know, Gold Dust is like 47 years old in this, and I'm like... I just I'm trying looking looking for younger guys. I mean, certainly the Uzos. Let's try and get them in that you know star category and you know major star. So yeah, we've got a match for them tonight, and obviously a victory. It's a sixty rated match, and they get the win in eight minutes forty eight. When Jimmy Uzo pinned Fandango with an it's an alias, an alias maybe I don't know. Uh, during the match. We saw Aiden English distract Jay Uzo and Simon Gotch also distracted Jimmy Uzo. So last week we had um, the the the, Vaud, the Vaudevillains uh, kind of be very annoying to the Uzos in the gym, and they kind of just do something a bit strange today as well during this match. They just decide to come out. Um, Bree, Bree Zango are both kind of out flat out on the floor, you know, not really with it. The Uzos are ready to sort of finish the match up. And the Vanderville, the Vanderville, I'm going to keep saying it wrong, the Vanderville sort of come out and they, they just sort of like frog march around the ring and just kind of act really weird and kind of making different funny faces and kind of a comedy moment. And the Usos are kind of just like, what on earth is going on? What 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 are they doing? Are they just, you know, what are they doing? I mean, this is obviously build up to their storyline. Um, it's gained heat, which is all good stuff. Yeah, so we're obviously just building up to something that the the, the van the van der the Vaude, I'm gonna keep saying it wrong. The Vorder villains are gonna kind of for the moment just keep being very annoying to the Usos. We'll see where it goes. Rating a sixty on this match though. Cesaro cuts a promo on Chris Jericho, and I am well pleased with the eighty-one rating. So last week 
Chris Jericho just decided to trip Cesaro, thought it would be funny. Cesaro kind of lashed out. Uh, Jericho didn't like the lash out, and then he um, interfered in Cesaro's match. So Cesaro's cutting a promo. Chris Jericho kind of comes out and says, look, look I, I, obviously, I obviously misjudged the situation. I just thought it would be hilarious. I just, I just, I've got this thing, you know, where I just see something in my head and I have to do it, and I just stuck my leg out. You tripped. You lashed out, which I didn't like, but, but you know, looking back now, you know, I, I made a mistake. It was obviously, it wasn't the right thing to do. And, you know, I just, look, I just thought it would be something that was fun. You know, I didn't realise you were late for a match. I, I, you know, if I'd known that you were sort of pushed for time, you know, I wouldn't have, you know, done it. But, you know, I hope you can sort of find that, you know, I am, I am sorry, didn't mean it. And Cesaro's kind of thinking about it, and he's like, well, look, I don't want to be the bad guy in the situation. And so he kind of agrees, and... And they shake hands, and uh, you know, Chris Jericho even raises Cesaro's arm in kind of uh, I don't want to say celebration, that's completely the wrong word, but you know, kind of um, appreciation uh, for Cesaro. But then he just lashes out and he knocks him to the ground. Yep, Chris Jericho being the heel, obviously just uh, you know, put Cesaro in a, a, a full sense of security, and then when he least expected it, clotheslined him to the mat. And then sticks him in the walls of Jericho and uh, he's stuck in there and Cesaro's in a lot of pain until some agents can kind of come in and uh, and split it all up. The storyline lost heat and I think we said this last week, um, it's got such a high rating that, you know, even a 72 forces it to lose heat. Dolph Ziggler takes on Sheamus. Uh, yeah, one of the guys I'd like to push to some extent, maybe a little bit too old. To push into the title picture, maybe, uh, but yeah, certainly want to sort of get him up there a little bit. We we are struggling for major stars and stars at the moment, so yeah, we want a lot more people, you know, under the age of forty, preferably under the age of sort of thirty six, thirty seven, but certainly under the age of forty, we're trying to push those guys really. Sixty four rating, good heat and decent wrestling. Dolph Ziggler defeated Sheamus in twelve minutes fifty five by pinfall with a zigzag. And then we have a promo from Big Cass and uh, Enzo Amore. And, um, well, it's a promo on Sky High, who they're kind of feuding with at the moment. Uh, John Cena and AJ Styles are in that feud as well. These were pre-booked feuds, so I, I can't sort of explain what's going on. I don't know what went on. I don't know how they started. So basically, this is just, you know, we're going through the motions with these storylines for the moment until I can either think of something to add my own kind of uh, stamp on it or, you know, until the end. So we had AJ Styles come out um, just to sort of interrupt the promo and cut his own promo and they, they sort of argue back and forth between each other. Rating 60, a little bit disappointed with that actually. I thought putting AJ Styles in there might raise it a little bit. Maybe he should have had John Cena come out as well, but, you know, he's already got his own thing going on tonight. The Ascension take on Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. 56 overall, that's not great, but we're, we want to get the Ascension over. Just a, a plain and simple, another tag team match to get one of the teams over. Subpar wrestling, Little Heat. The Ascension defeated Darren Young and Titus O'Neil in 9 minutes 17 when Connor pinned Titus O'Neil with a fall of man. Yeah, nothing more to say about that one. Kevin Owens cuts a promo on Sami Zayn and Sami Zayn appears and makes a challenge for Unforgiven. So these two feud in and again... I know nothing about it. I'm just going through the motions. But Sami Zayn will take on Kevin Owens at Unforgiven. This gets a rating of 81. The storyline has gained heat. Stephanie McMahon then comes out to the ring. I don't want to overuse sort of her and Triple H, but I want them to be around. Nothing more really to say about this angle apart from the announcement that she makes. And she announces that next week, a WWE legend will be returning to Monday Night Raw. So you've got to wait and see who that is. Rating of 70. Ryback takes on Zack Ryder. Another uh, poor match, really. Well, I mean, it says, um, well, yeah, subpar wrestling. So decent reaction, uh, subpar wrestling, but only a rating of 60. Zack Ryder defeated Ryback in 11 minutes 35 by pinfall with a rough rider. So, yeah, Zack Ryder's another one of those guys that I wouldn't mind getting over a little bit. 
just another youngster to kind of try and get into that top level. Again, I don't really see him as a title holder. Certainly not the world title, but yeah, just get him in and you know, get him in that mix. We just we're just desperate for more for more people at the top of the card. And Ryback is on his way out, so he's the one who jobbed here. They had good chemistry though. The new day make an open challenge for Unforgiven for their tag team titles, and then it is the Ascension that come out and accept. Really is nothing more to say about this one. We're just trying to get a couple of matches announced for uh for Unforgiven. I think we've announced maybe three or four now. Uh, rating of 54, pretty poor, but these guys here, they're unimportant. Uh, yeah, we're trying to get them over, but it's going to take a while and sort of any segments they're in at the moment. Scores aren't going to be great. But yeah, an announcement then for a tag team, the tag team title match at Unforgiven. The New Day will take on the Ascension. Alberto Del Rio takes on Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger is another one of those guys in that category that I want to push. Rating of 78. I mean, these guys never went on to be anything spectacular in WWE, as, as far as I know. Um, but when you look at their stats in-game, they're pretty awesome. You know, any other TEW save, you're pushing that guy. You're pushing these guys. So, got to do it, really. But yeah, rating of 78. Decent match. Jack Swagger defeated Alberto Del Rio in 8 minutes 35 by disqualification. Daniel Bryan interviews Seth Rollins and he just announces that the, the title match has been confirmed. So Seth Rollins will get his entitled rematch for the WWE title at Unforgiven against Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose then interrupts. We had to get these guys on the card. I kind of came towards the end of booking and I thought, you know what? There's still one of our major stars we haven't put on the card yet. And our champion is... You've got to have them. You've got to have them somewhere, somehow. So... Yeah, stick in an interview and uh, have the two guys argue. They're in a storyline, um, which has gained heat, which is great stuff. This got a rating of 81. And then our main event, I'm pleased of 83. Yeah, John Cena taking on Rusev. Good heat and decent wrestling. John Cena defeated Rusev in 13 minutes 50 by a pinfall with an attitude adjustment. Uh, so the Bulgarian heavyweight championship storyline has advanced with this segment. Rating of 83 is fantastic. Didn't gain heat, though, which, interestingly, again, means it's already got a decent, you know, quite a high score. So, yeah, pleased with that. And it also means, of course, that um, Apollo Crews will be getting a title match for the the Bulgarian heavyweight title against Rusev. What do we get overall, guys? 72. I'm really disappointed with that. It's the storylines thing. Yeah, I'm sure we mentioned it last week. Still need a couple more storylines, I think. Um, and as with the WCW save, it's going to take a few episodes. We're going to have to clean up a couple of the storylines that are already there and then start splitting some of our major stars up um, and putting them in sort of different storylines and continue to get others over into that major star category so we can just naturally get better storylines with uh, you know, more popular people. So it is what it is. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm uh, disappointed, but so be it. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Please give a like and subscribe, and any comments below would be appreciated. And uh, keep going with the WCW save as well. That That's not going anywhere. That's still not going anywhere. It, it's kind of crossed my mind that oh, maybe two saves isn't... Or maybe I can't, but I, I, I can. I can do two saves. Take care, everybody, and I hope to see you all again soon. Goodbye.